Hi, my name is Jesse at Trash Panda, and today I want to take you behind the scenes and talk about everything that went into making our new mid-range, the Dune. So when it came to designing our new mid-range, we actually started a year before the inner core was released. And that's because we had kind of finalized the mold for the inner core, but we were still prototyping plastics. So I thought, why not start to design a mid-range as well? Because I know ultimately that's where we're gonna go after that. So we made a few videos, we kind of started the process and ultimately got to a place that I was really happy about. But when it came down to it, we had to shelve the project completely to put all of our focus and attention on the inner core. This is the Trash Panda inner core. The inner core is here. I am so stoked about this disc. That's right, we got one. When we shelved the project, that actually ended up working out perfectly because we learned some things in the process of making the inner core that applied to what would ultimately become our mid-range. So we updated a few minor things as to how the disc was designed, which is really an interesting process because you're in 3D design and you're in CAD and you're going, let's change this, let's change this. But ultimately when you throw it, to 300 feet, it, that little tiny change here is gonna affect it massively in the field. And so we kind of just like changed some things, got to a place where we felt pretty good and decided we're gonna run it, let's see how it goes. I just remember this feeling of like, I knew deep down, this is either gonna be super overstable or super understable and nowhere in between. Like there's no way this worked. This is the first version of what will be our mid-range. First flight ever, literally have not thrown them. It's super muddy so you can tell they haven't been thrown. We'll see what happens. Oh, I gave it hyzer and it held. I'm very happy with that flight. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. I'm gonna go flat. So on that first throw, I knew we had something. There was so much promise, but there were a few things that still needed to happen. First, we needed to do a three hour trial. In terms of building a new tool, you always wanna run a long trial just to make sure that everything's working perfectly. And simultaneously, I wanted to test it at sea level. And based on how it flew at sea level and in Denver, as well as how that three hour trial went, it was all systems go. At Trash Panda, our mission is to grow the sport sustainably. And every single day we're invested in the future of disc golf. And we're invested in that future primarily through making discs out of recycled plastic. So when it comes to each new disc, we kind of view it as this exercise in what story can we tell? What visuals and branding and marketing and overall package can we create to, to move this mission forward? So at this point, we had a disc. We had this mid-range but we didn't have that story. And now it was time to find it. We talked about a bunch of different ideas, but ultimately one thing we just couldn't get out of our heads was this idea that when it comes to sustainability, a lot of times people think they have to change everything in their life. And for us, that's just not the case. We believe that it's not about someone doing everything, but rather everyone doing something. And so when it came time to designing this story, we tried to find something that could kind of help us move that idea forward. The idea that it's about every small action, it's about every single thing we do. So we were sitting there and we were all throwing out different names and the whiteboard was getting covered in just different ideas. Some that, who knows, it might be a future disc and some that will never see the light of day. And one of our team members said, Dune. And the first thing you have to do when you think of a good name is go to the PDJ's website and make sure there's not already an approved disc with that name. And Dune was just too obvious. Like surely there's already a disc named Dune. It's too good of a name. The marketing potentials, the storytelling potentials, the, the sheer visuals, it was too good. And we went to the PDJ's website, typed it in, and nothing. So we had this name and it represented this story that we wanted to tell this really big idea. But to make a big idea simple is sometimes easier said than done. 
And over the course of a couple of weeks, we were just trying to figure out exactly how to, how to nail down that story. And sometimes it's better to not try to reinvent the wheel. One of our team members found this quote, this old Tanzanian proverb that says, little by little, a little becomes a lot. To be honest, I think, I think it was in this moment where I also was starting to question our impact. Are we doing enough? Is what we're doing making a true impact or is it kind of just a drop in the bucket and it's not gonna do much? And as we thought about these tiny, tiny grains of sand becoming these massive dunes, it was just perfection. It was this moment where we could say, hey, like these, like these little grains of sand, yes, we too feel small and maybe we feel like our accent, actions are insufficient, but at the end of the day, these tiny things add up. So with all of that, our head of marketing, Tom, started to create the visuals. And sometimes this guy just hits home run after home run after home run. And we now had this brand package, this story, this world built around this idea that though we too may feel small like these tiny grains of sand, what we do, the actions we take, are enough. But as far as our knowledge and our expertise is concerned, telling the story is one thing. Making the discs themselves is a completely separate challenge. Over the course of the following months, we started to get samples of every material we could find. And it might sound simple to say that we make a product out of recycled TPU, but TPU is really an umbrella term and it's a type of plastic, but there are hundreds of variations of that type of plastic. This is the inner core. You can see the flexibility. This is also the inner core and it's also TPU and you can see the flexibility. And if that wasn't crazy enough, this is also TPU. So over those following months, we started to test everything we could get our hands on. And ultimately we found a few things that would work beautifully. One of those materials in particular we sampled and it was absolutely perfect. Actually, it was a yellow sample, and many of you might remember it from an early video uh, where a lot of people were like, what is that yellow? We ended up never saying anything about those inner cores, and we donated them to some women's clinics. So they're out there in the world, and there's a very select few. Um, but that was the sample that we ran, and it was perfect. So we got a literal thousands of pounds of that material. And as we started to test it, it was working perfectly. It was looking beautiful. Our timelines were in the perfect place. And then there was metal in it. There were literally these tiny pieces of metal throughout this material. First time we're trying the Dune Red, which I am super excited about. It's a little loud, but this is why we're doing exactly what we're doing. We're running into a new problem that we never ran into on the last mold. As you can maybe see here, there's a little aluminum on the injection point. So we're trying to diagnose that right now, figure out what's going on. But yeah, this is, this is not a virgin plastic problem. And this metal was non-ferrous. Non-ferrous is simply a fancy term to say it's not magnetic. All that means is that in an injection molding machine, there are a couple of steps where there's a magnet to catch those pieces. And those pieces were not caught and ultimately started to clog up our gate. So we had these thousands of pounds that made these perfect dunes that we were so happy with, and it wouldn't work. We needed this new tool, which is a video for another time, and we'll talk about that in the future, but we had to table that. And in the meantime, luckily, we were kind of working on some other things. We were bringing in other plastics that we could potentially use, as well as launching a brand new disc recycling program. And through that program, we've received hundreds of discs from the public, we've received thousands from different retailers, and even a couple of manufacturers have started working with us in that. So luckily, we had these thousands of pounds, but we also had some other materials that we were gonna be able to use. Overall, yes, there were some problems with manufacturing this time around, but I think I've kind of swallowed the pill that there will be problems with manufacturing out of recycled plastic every time. But I have to say, this time it was 
overwhelmingly smooth. So we have this story and we have these discs and now it came time to just put it all together. So we took the discs and we took this story and we took our cameras and we went to the great sand dunes. So we get to the dunes and we decide, let's just go on a quick scout almost. Like let's get to the top, let's see what's out there and let's just take kind of broken down gear. Not all the gear, let's just take some of it and get what we can. And so going up, like we're getting a few shots and it is tiring. It's going from hard to soft sand and it's just like, we're already at 7,000 feet and it's just straight up. And as we're like trying to catch our breath, all of a sudden there's like a couple gusts of wind that's like 20, 30, maybe 40 miles an hour. And then all of a sudden, like some of those gusts become like sustained wind. So what was supposed to be this like quick scouting trip ended up being this moment where I was just like, we're gonna have to change everything. The whole idea for this shoot is out the window. But before we made those decisions, like let's take some time. So we get back to the car and we decide to wait it out. And as it turns out, there's actually this four wheel drive only road that goes kind of around the north side of the dunes. So we drive around, we find this parking lot. There's this nice little walk across the river. We get up into the dunes. And as we're walking up, we're starting to feel some wind, but we're also getting hopeful on this location. Then we could see another storm. It starts to blow through. We kind of get down into this area that's a little protected. We actually found a pretty large tent that must have blown over. And so we kind of packed out some trash with us, which was kind of funny. And then we're walking and we, there's this ridge and we look up and we can't see any wind or any sand blowing over it. So we're like, maybe, maybe things are good now. And we crest this ridge and what we find on the other side is not only this expanse of dunes, but an expanse of stillness. What follows is this hour of video that I don't know if I'll ever experience again. It is just perfect shot after perfect shot after perfect shot. The shadows are casting perfectly. The sun is unbelievable and everything is just working out beautifully. We get to the top and it's time to throw the discs off the top. And I throw one and now it's gone from like videography to storytelling to now it's just like I'm a disc golfer again. And I'm throwing discs on these massive sand dunes. This moment we're at the top looking over these vast dunes in absolute pin drop silence, having just come from like the most chaotic moment where you've got sand pelting you, you've got 50 mile an hour winds, and this plan that you made is going straight out the window because things just aren't gonna work out. And then you're here. Chaos turns into beauty and perfection. And it just, I couldn't help but feel like it was symbolic of what we're doing as well. Chaotic in terms of manufacturing discs. Chaotic in terms of where our planet's at and where our world is at and the fact that plastic production still runs rampant. And I think that's where we're at. We haven't launched the disc yet. We have a launch party around the corner. You still have to receive it and decide whether or not you like it. We're in this moment between that chaos and that stillness. And I just have this sense of the same thing I had on the top of the dunes. This feeling that everything is coming together. This whole story of the behind the scenes is really just a story of how we had a problem here and we solved it. And we did this thing here and over time that added up. And then this thing and this thing and all those different things, these tiny things added up. The reality of our behind the scenes is the same as the dune. It's the story we're here to tell and it's the story we've grown to love so, so much. That little by little, a little becomes a lot.